EDI registration. Electronic Data Interchange or EDI is the structured transmission of data between organizations by electronic means. It is used to transfer electronic documents or business data from one computer system to another computer system. That is, from one trading partner to another trading partner without human intervention. EDI eliminates the process of sending and receiving documents through the postal system. It also enables data which is sent or received to be processed directly from the computer system without having to rekey in the data. Traditionally, EDI has been associated with the exchange of trading information. EDI applications have also been developed for finance, administration, healthcare, etc. In this lesson, we will study various issues and aspects related with EDI. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand EDI, business approach to EDI, role of EDI in business, EDI role in international trade, EDI in customs. EDI and other similar technologies save a company money by providing an alternative to or replacing information flows that require a great deal of human interaction and materials such as paper documents, meetings, faxes, etc. Even when paper documents are maintained in parallel with EDI exchange, ex for example, printed shipping manifests, electronic exchange and the use of data from that exchange reduces the handling costs of sorting, distributing, organizing and searching paper documents. EDI and similar technologies allow a company to take advantage of the benefits of storing and manipulating data electronically without the cost of manual entry. If a company recognizes that there is a business need to develop plans for the implementation EDI, then it is useful to devise a step-by-step. -step. Since management attention is focused on the day-to-day -day running of the business, it will be necessary to prepare the case for EDI so that it can be given some priority in your company. To achieve this, every company needs an EDI champion. This can be anyone, whether from a business or IT background. This person should then undertake preliminary investigation to begin to build the business case for EDI. Initially, it is useful to understand the status of EDI in your industry. The EDI Awareness Centers can help with this by providing information and useful contacts. Following this, you should contact your largest customers and suppliers to see if they have any active EDI trading relationships or future plans which will involve your company. They should also be able to discuss with you the reasons why they have adopted EDI. You should then be able to form a view of the potential for EDI in your company and from whom external influences are likely to come. When this evaluation is complete, the company will then be in possession of the facts with which to make a decision about EDI. Then management should be asked to support EDI implementation and most importantly, the full integration of EDI with current systems and processes. With management support, it is possible to move on to a more detailed analysis of EDI applications from an operational and technical standpoint. The result of this will be a development plan which clearly outlines the implementation strategy, including factors which are external to the company. All staff who are to be involved in the EDI project should be kept fully informed. The user department will have to be trained in both the new EDI application and the procedures which have been defined to support the application. Communication at the day-to-day -day operational and implementation level is important. Good supporting documentation is also essential. 
The best way to achieve a return on that investment is to increase both the number of trading partners you have and the variety of documents that you are able to trade electronically. You will now be in a position which will leave you well equipped to do this. It is essential for any EDI to have restricted access to information which can be dependent on any of the following security measures. If the message is not protected, then any user can access anyone else's data. Implementation of EDI in international trade and settlement requires standardization of trade documents to be computerized and open EDI networks. This set of guidelines consists of business model requirements, guidelines for operation, guidelines for authentication or notary, guidelines for communication infrastructure, guidelines for the EDI protocol. These deliverables will be assessed in the practical use experiment project for EDI in international trade and settlement and put into practical use. They are expected to form common industrial infrastructures. It should be possible to create a few or even a single message or document for the entire process of transactions in the course of foreign trade. Steamer agents would file manifest with the customs electronically that would be used also by Port Trust. EDI is a way of business life. It is based on the principle of trust and contractual obligations. Once Evidence Act and other laws of the land recognize EDI transactions and provide for the same by fast settlement of disputes, it should be possible to do away with requirements for paper documentation. Electronic data interchange is a way of business life which thrives in an environment based on trust of faith Whereas in the present manual system, the procedures and practices are all based on lack of trust and faith. Now let us check our progress by finding out if the given statements are right or wrong. Communication protocol is the method by which two computers coordinate their communication. Right or wrong? Right. Data element is the biggest, smallest item of information in an electronic data interchange standard. Right or wrong? Wrong. EDI stands for Electronic Data Industry. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. EDI may seem difficult to distinguish from email as both involve the transmission of electronic messages between computer systems. What differentiates EDI from email is the internal structure and the content of the data message. The content of an email message is not intended to be processed in any way by the receiving system, where EDI messages are intended for and are therefore structured for automatic processing. The major challenge being faced by the organizations wishing to use EDI is not a technical one, nor one relating to legal or security issues. The EDI challenge is one of affecting the cultural change within organizations and building relationships, trust and understanding with business partners.